Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 54, Reflection Example. In this session, we'll look at a practical example of using reflection. If you haven't watched part 53, where we have covered reflection basics, I would strongly encourage you to watch that video first before continuing with this session. Now, in this session, what I want to do is basically develop a simple Windows Forms application. You know, if you can see a form here, the users will enter the name of the type, for example, system.string or system.in32 or system.console class. When they enter the name of the class here, you know, they need to enter the fully qualified name. Once they do that and when they click this button, discover type information. Now, I want to list all of the methods in that class and all of the properties and constructors in the respective list boxes as shown here. And to do this, it's pretty simple. If you have got what we have discussed in the previous session, it's very, very simple to do that. And let's quickly see how to do it. Now, if you look at this one, I already have a Windows Forms application created here. And I have created a form which has got a text box, label, a button control, and then three list boxes. And then when I click this button, that's when we need to inspect the type information and populate the respective list boxes. Let's see how to do that. Okay, we know that the classes related to reflection are present in system.reflection namespace. So let's import that fast. So system.reflection. Now what we want to do is when users run this application, they enter the name of the type into this text box. And if you look at the ID of that text box, if we go to the properties, it it is text type name. Okay, so we need to take the name of the type from this text box and then find the type information and populate these list boxes. So let's see how to do that. So string type name is equal to, so users will enter the type name in that text box. So let's get that from the text box. Once we do that, we can use the type classes get type static method. Now, we have covered the basics of this in the previous session, so please watch the previous session if you haven't already done so. So, we get the type here, and once we have the type, you know what to do. It's pretty simple from here. So, type T. So, we got the type here, and now what we need to do, we need to get methods, properties, and constructors, and it's pretty simple. So, all you do is t.getMethods. And you know, get methods will return method info. We have seen that in the previous session again, method info array. So method info array. And we call this, let's say methods is equal to that. And what we need to do, we need to use a for each loop. So for each method info, and let's say method in methods collection. What we need to do, in this form, we have this list methods uh, list box. So we need to add that method information to that list box. So LST methods to the list box dot items because it's the items collection dot add what we need to add the name of the method. So I take the method object and then say method dot name. So now if we just run it as is so what's happening here we need to enter the type name let's say system dot console class so we know the console class present in system namespace when i say discover type information we have an error here let's see what is that error okay continue let's see let's put a breakpoint and see why are we getting that error so when we run this now, so system dot console class c o n s o l e console, and we click that button, discover type information. Let's say that okay. So so type is null for some reason. So let's understand why is that type null? Because we are saying type dot get type, and this is why instead of passing the variable name. We hard coded that as a string. Okay, so that's a mistake. So stop that. It's a copy paste error. Pass in the type name 
instead of passing it as a string within double quotes. So now we run that and enter system.console class. So system.console class. So discover type information. You see that we get all the methods within the console class. For example, we have write line. Now write line is an overloaded function. So that's why you see it so many times. Now let's say I want the return type of the function as well within this list. All you need to do is along with the method name, maybe I want the return type. So method dot return type dot name. And then you give a space and then all right. So now when we run this, we should get the return type of the method as well. So system dot console and discover type information and you should see the return type of every method and obviously for console dot write line it's void so void write line and for read line it would be string so you should see for read line it is string okay similarly if you want you know on the second list box we want to show properties and on the third one constructors to do that it's a simple copy paste except that you will replace method i mean instead of get methods what you will specify is get uh, what's the second one we want properties so we'll say get properties so t dot get properties and get properties will return property info array so instead of method info we will say property info and this is extremely easy once you know how to get one specific you know set of methods or properties it's extremely easy for the other types. It's just the names or different property info. And this is going to be property. And this collection is properties. And what we need to do instead of populating the list methods list box, it will be list properties list box. So list properties dot items dot add what we want. A property will also have a return type. So property dot I think it's property type. So if you're not sure, just hit the dot, you know, and you can the IntelliSense will show you different properties and methods. And when you highlight here, look at that property type gets the type of this property. Okay. So I mean, after you get the basics of .NET, it's it's mostly self-learning. You can learn it by yourself with the help of it in trial and IntelliSense. So .name, and then what else I want? I want the name of the property as well. So property name. That's it. So now if we run that, we should get properties as well. Let's do it for constructors, and then we will run it all at once. So for constructors, we use t dot get constructors method and the constructors constructor info and we will give the variable as constructors and for each constructor info object let's call this constructor in constructors collection what we want to do and in the from the previous session if you remember constructor dot name you know we know that a constructor will have the same name as that of the class so constructor dot name will will be of no use so instead of that when we say constructor dot to string the to string method is overridden to give us you know what are the parameters that the constructor takes in which is useful so instead of all this for a constructor all we do is constructor dot to string okay so now if we run this and by the way there's one more thing it's not list properties the list box is list constructors so list constructors dot items dot add so now when we run this and maybe we give let's say system dot string string class discover type information look at that it's got two properties you know this many constructors and these many methods and similarly if you want you know there is something called system dot text dot string builder class let's say discover type information look at that it has got so many and I think it's actually adding all this when I mean, we have got a slight problem here which we will correct now 
system.console when I say discover type information system.console doesn't have an in32 property I mean length property so where is this coming from the previous values are being retained in this list box and to correct that all you do is uh, set them to empty whenever we start so list item list methods dot items dot clear the items and do the same thing with the other list so we have list properties so list properties and list constructors just clear them before you start adding anything so now if we run it should do so system dot maybe text dot string builder discover type information we get that on the other hand when we go back to system dot console discover type information all right so it's working as expected now so it's a pretty simple example where we are able to discover the type information at runtime and populate these list boxes and remember with this you know you can with reflection it's not just that listing methods or properties or constructors there are a variety of things that you can do for example when you say t dot there are several you know boolean properties as well is the type abstract is it an array you know, there are several properties and methods that are really really useful for variety of things okay now whenever you have time just explore the system.reflection namespace it's really useful all right so on this slide you can find some resources for ASP.NET and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day